Hey, everyone. Your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. We have tips and tricks and decorating advice for you today. So let's get started. This is episode 208, How to Do Red, White, and Blue Right. And to the show notes for today's episode can be found at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 208. So I'm feeling rather uh, patriotic today, like I was born on the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born close to the 4th of July, so I'm always feeling patriotic. It's fun. Yeah. I, I love the summer holidays. It's, uh, you know, uh, the summer feeling and then the red, white, and blue. It's all really great. And happy Memorial Day. That's yes, right. happy Memorial Day to everyone. I everyone's. hope you're having fun today. Or maybe you're listening a little bit later because you did something fun today. And just remember that today was set aside. You remember all of the um, people who... Uh, have given the ultimate sacrifice for our country um, and that's and for our freedom. And that's why we remember them. You know, I come from an Air Force family. I'm an Air Force brat. My son has en- had enlisted in both the Air, uh, Army and the Air Force. And so we're pretty patriotic here. Um, and uh, these holidays really mean something special. And I just got to put a plug into your, if you have a national cemetery close to where you live, Make sure you um, look up the the activities going on for the Memorial Day weekend. I know we live near Fort Indian Town Gap. Well, not too close, but that's our closest one. And my father is buried there. It's a national cemetery. And we've been to many, many Memorial Day services, and they are just stunning. I just, there's just no other word that there's never a dry eye in the house because it makes you so proud even though we don't always agree on things politically, we can certainly agree that we have a sovereign nation that is really worth um, uh, fighting for, being free for, and also um, celebrating. So make sure you spend a little time just thinking about those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, yeah. that's so well good. said. Yes, really. And it's so true. And there's there's all those celebrations going all over the country. So it'd be easy to find something. Mm-hmm. It is. And they're just magnificent. So if everybody's, uh, you know, having a lovely weekend, a long weekend is so nice. And if you haven't had a chance to decorate yet with red, white, and blue, you've still got some other summer holidays coming up and you can actually leave up your red, white, and blue all summer long. I think it's really charming, especially if you have a front porch or uh, an outdoor area that you can decorate. So today we're going to talk about how to do it right. We're a little slow putting our red, white, and blue outside because we're having our porch stained an opaque gray. So as soon as that's- Oh, nice. Yeah. Hopefully that'll be this next week. We've We've had some rain issues. It's been like um, almost like bib- biblical rain here oh, in the really? last two. Really? Oh, it's, it's so been rainy awful. here too. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, what we usually do though is we always have a flag flying out in the front of our house, and we have one hanging from the t- the ceiling of our porch, um, uh, facing a, a big long road that comes up. Uh, past our house. And it's just a perfect sp- place that you can see the flag we hang, a real big one um, that people can see it from far away. And, you know, there are special rules about if you're going to decorate with the flag. So can I, do you mind if I just say a couple yeah, of those girls? No, I think that's great information those. for yeah. people to have. Because I think there's a lot of mis, you know, misinformation about this. And a lot of people, a lot of crafters don't know. Well, I'll just, I just want to tell you a little story. I grew up on Air Force bases all over the world. And no matter where we were at, I think it was 4.30 or 5 o'clock. I can't remember. Um, they would play taps. Now, I they, they did do Reveille, but I was never up that early, I guess, to see it. You know? <laughs> and so I could be at the playground, like at a, a local playground, and we would hear it. It would be broadcasted all over the base. And the cars stopped. If so, if there was an Air Force person in the, an airman in the car, he'd get out and and you you always knew where the flag was because you and even at the playground, all of us stopped what we were doing, got off our swings and everything, put our hands over our heart and stood still until um uh it was the um 
lowering of the flag was done. And I just remember growing up with that and have such a respect for that. And it's just such a, um, like a common thing that we can all do together because it does talk about that we do have a sovereign nation. And um, so I have a great respect for the flag and especially because we have a lot of people that served in my family. So of course that also is tied up into it about just honoring our service people as well. But a flag should be flown. Uh, the, it should always be the highest flag. If you, at one point we had like our state flag, we had the army flag, we had the, um, uh, the um, star spangled banner all hanging um, on, on, at the front of our house. And it was always the American flag was always highest. And then all the other flags um, were to the one side. I need to interrupt here just for a second, because I believe in Texas, you are allowed to have them the same height. (laughs) No, I'm not making this up. I think it's true. I'm going to check it, but check it out because, and I was also reading. No, because Texas was a nation before it joined. And so I believe that was a little different, um, uh, you know, that is when true. I mean, Texas union. was a nation, but, mm-hmm. but you, um, if you hang a flag, like from your ceiling, it should, I mean, I'm sorry, it should never be hung on the ceiling, a flag, but if you hang it from like the top of a wall down, or like we do from the top rafters of our porch down, um, it should be hung with the union, which is the star uh, with the Navy blue background with the stars on the left side. Now oh, this is, in- I didn't yeah. Know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is so interesting because, um, when you fly a flag, uh, um, I, I looked at, if you look at the patches on the military that they wear on their sleeves, it's, it looks backwards. And I said, well, wait a minute, you're supposed to fly. You're supposed to always be looking at the flag. Um, if, with the union to the left side and it's to the right side. And that is because as they are marching, the flag is flying. It looks like it's flying. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That gives me chills. Oh, um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just, no, I had to check myself. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so Because that's all they say. That's what that's been said here so many times. But it says here that that is false. Oh. So now we're going to debunk that. Yeah. Well, okay. good. It's, it, hey, it's good to debunk things like that. The other thing is that you should never leave a flag out in the rain. It should always yeah. come in. A flag should never touch the ground or any material under it. Um, it can stay out overnight if it is lit. And that's really important. We have it. We have one that stays out overnight and we just have a spot on it. So if it's lit and the other thing, the way to properly dispose of a flag is that um, is, is usually to burn it, but you can also cut it into pieces. Like you can cut the um, union field, which is the blue and white, and then the stripes off of it. So it's easier for you to burn that way, but you, and that's the proper way to do that. There's all kinds of other things you can read, just Google it. And, uh, and it's very interesting because. But see, uh, that's interesting because you're just supposed to dispose of it by burning, but then you always hear black burning's a bad thing. So it's well, like- but but the motive is different. You're not you're you're not desecrating the flag. You're showing it honor that way. So it's, but it's the, a matter the scary of your motive. Thing for me, is at Fourth of July, the neighborhood I used to be in would put all these flags in your front yard which is great. But then I would feel like, now, what do I do with it when the holiday is over? Because you feel like, well, you can't throw it away. You mean the little I mean, flags? Not, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I never knew what I was them. supposed to do with those mm-hmm. at the at, later on. I think I have them in a closet somewhere. I don't well, know. Well, just keep them and then they turn into vintage flags and then they're even more fabulous. I love <laughs> okay. a vintage and flag. That's right. And, you know, this is not the end all be all. There's a lot I don't know. There's just, you know, some things just from growing up I do know. And I looked up a few things, but there's a big long list. And it would behoove you if you have a flag just to go and look up what the um, code is for taking care of a flag, how to fly the flag. You know, never fly it upside down unless you're under great distress, things like that. I just think it's not only very interesting, but it also um, shows honor to um, everyone in this country. But decorating, decorating with red, white, and blue is so much fun (laughs) in the summer. It is. Yes. And I love to do it with colors that are a little bit off from the actual true red, 
the the blue and then the pure white. I like to try to mix it up just a little bit and sort of play with the use and the shades. Um, you know, like I mentioned, I love a vintage flag and oftentimes the white has turned to sort of an ivory or an ecru kind mm-hmm. of color. I love those old flags. Yeah. So I pull in like more of an ivory and ecru and then maybe like a persimmon or a sort of a tomato we red, something that has a little more orange in it. And then your blue could be a deep, deep navy or even maybe a slate. And those, well, it's the palettes of red, white, and blue. If uh, you don't want to, to decorate with the actual bright sort of primary red and primary blue and the bright, bright, crisp white, that's, a, a, you know, an option to create different palettes just playing with the shades. Mm-hmm. Can I just well, add, I because mm-hmm. I just looked it up at, at Snopes, Snoops, I never know how to pronounce that. And it says the flag of the U.S. should be, it says it can be the same height as the state flag, but it should be uh, from the perspective of the observer to the left of the state flag. So anyway, that's what that says. Uh, So if it's wrong, then I'm sure you'll tell us. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I think that's absolutely right. Um, But let's talk about outdoors. Uh, Like I said, we're a little late, but this summer we're planting... um, blue hydrangeas in big pots on either side of our door. And then I have these white clay pots that I'm going to, I'm in the process of painting white and I'm putting down, we have big slate steps. I think we have four of them or five of them going down off our porch onto the walkway. And I'm going to put um, every other step and I'm um, putting big pots of red and pink hydrangeas. Oh, so pretty. And well, then I love that bunting too. Well, I was just going to say, I just ordered it. a oh, bunting. Are you doing- I, oh, well, I love that look. From, for the, from the top of our porch at the front of the door, all the way to our first poles, which start our, our posts, which start our, um, our porch, you know, the fence of the, right. uh, yeah, around, sorry, girls the around the porch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm, we're doing that this year and I'm so, but I'm using it. I'm doing just red, white, and blue, not, not anything that's vintage because our house is gray stone and white siding and black shutters, you know? So, um, I think that'll be a good look. So I'm really excited to get that going. And then we have the flag on the one side of the house that can be seen from the road. And then in the back, I planted these big black planters, rectangular full of hydrangeas last year that were pink, but I'm amending the soil to make them blue this year. Good and girl. I'm going to, yeah. And then I'm going to, I think on our swing, which is gray, I'm going to do red, white, and blue pillows. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. 
And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. As far as decorating for the summer holidays, I tend not to do a lot of red, white, and blue in my house. I might do a little vignette on my table in my kitchen, something like that. And it may often involve something so simple like a bowl of strawberries and you know, maybe a little flag stuck in um, – a, a like an herb pot or something like that. Just, you know, one of those little tiny flags that come in a little stick, something like that. Really simple, just a tiny little nod inside, but outside on my porch, now that I have a front porch with this house, that's where I really love to decorate. And I think, you know, the white of my house and just the, it, the whole look of the porch really lends itself to going a little crazy with the summer decor and particularly the red, white, and blue. Can I tell you something that I did the last couple of years and I'm going to do it again this year that really worked out because I, I agree with you and um, Kelly, I think that you can do a red, white, and blue theme, but it doesn't have to look so, okay, here's the flag in your face. Yeah. Here's a facsimile of a flag, although I love that. But if you want something a little different, I have a lot of like, um, you know, blue and white, the blue and white, like ginger jars and what have you. But I have these blue and white planters. They were, I've had them for decades, but they were in indoors where they had that little sort of almost like a Chinese stand that goes, you, yes. you put it on. Right. Mm-hmm. I painted the stand black and I planted those blue and white um I guess they're porcelain. They they almost have a have almost a Mine have almost like an oriental motif to it, but I planted yeah. them with pink and red hydrangeas. They looked stunning. Yes. Because pink pink and red hydrangeas what together was it look the, absolutely um, beautiful. And did you put geraniums too? Or was it the That's, it was all What did like, I say? Did I say hydrangeas? Oh no, I'm so sorry. Pink and white geranium. Sorry that, about that. Well, oh, I have to tell yeah, you beautiful. that I, because I asked because while I was getting ready for this episode, that is the oh, that was the only visual I kept coming running through my head <laughs> because that on your blog, first of all, the photos were so gorgeous, but that combination was just so stunning. And you know, I'm not really a blue girl, but no. wow, I was totally taking it. And as I was preparing for this, I just kept thinking of that. So I definitely wanted to check because I'm going mm-hmm. to do I'm that. I'm sorry. This, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, and so I wanted to make sure it wasn't, uh, I was no, like, oh, I thought it was geraniums. No, they were geraniums. And here's the neat part. You can get them, those big um, planter planters, you can get them dirt cheap, like at Walmart, they have knockoffs. I mean, mine were yeah. a little better. And that's why I didn't get rid of them for two decades. I couldn't think of the idea of something that I had invested in. Okay, now I'm going to give it away. So right. I just held on to them. And I'm glad I did because I totally repurposed them. But you can get them at Tuesday morning, at Home Goods, at Walmart. You can get them f- for such incredibly low prices, probably about what you would pay for a regular old planter. Less than oh, that, yeah. actually. Yeah, you definitely, they, they're around in weird places. Like, I've even been in a dollar you know, store. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? <laughs> and not that they're a dollar, but if, you know, yeah, not everything yeah. in the dollar store is a dollar, but you know, that That's kind true. of store. Yeah. yeah. And so if you don't want to go totally flag, which we're doing buntings and we have a bunting and a, an American flag, but we're using those colors as we, um, as we decorate outdoors. And I have these really beautiful, uh, like royal blue and white, um, geometric, outdoor rugs that we have, uh, we have two sets of black, um, rocking chairs on either side of our, of our front door and they go on there. So, I mean, it just, all those pops of color just really speak to a very overall patriotic look. 
Yeah, I mean, and I loved doing kind of some navy and red. And like you said, it doesn't have to be, or kind of a royal blue. It doesn't have to be something that's really overtly patriotic if you don't want that. But just some red and white or red, white, and blue, I think kind of gives the feeling uh, for the kind of the summer patriotic holidays, Memorial Day and Fourth of July especially. Yeah, and you can add it in in such small ways. Even um, the little paper drinking straws. You know, you could get a bunch of those mm-hmm. in either red, red or blue. Yeah. And just, you know, it, you can display them in a closed glass jar. And it just looks so cute. Kind of like we talked about those orange crayons that I did in the summer. Right. And heck, you could do red, white, and blue crayons. Could be so cute too. I did something last year that I think I will do again. Uh, my mom had sent us all these sparklers, like I, you can buy them in LA, but I think she was really excited that you could, she could buy sparklers for the girls in Georgia. I guess it's not legal everywhere, but you can get sparklers here. I mean, then they're not, you know, dangerous fireworks, but the packaging is so cute. They're the long, barely thin little rectangle packages. And so she had sent a whole bunch and we didn't use, you know, we did a couple and that was it. And so I put them <laughs> in a, one of those glass jars with a lid and they oh, just, there was maybe, 15 or 20 boxes in there. And it just looks so cute because the, obviously the packaging is all red, white, and blue. And it says, you know, it has like, you know, like a sparkler, you know, little kind of logo on it. Super cute. And, you know, even if you get them, just um, take, make sure you have the boxes empty and just yeah, put them all in exactly. there. exactly. Keep the empty boxes. You use them from year to year. One, one year, I mean, I do like a little bit of a nod to the, the country. So I'm, I'm probably going to get that pillow that Anita was talking about. I absolutely think it's adorable and it's truly a flag pillow. That'll go in my family room on my white sofa. One year. Oh, it'd be great I, on white. I know. And my, 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 um, sofa is like a little off white, but it looks totally, it just looks white until you get up close to it. But one year I did over my mantle pottery barn had these, oh, they're, they were circular, but they're called fans where, you know, it's, um, it's like you're folding them over each other to make, you know, like an accordion fan. Mm -hmm. And I took this big, long strip of burlap And painted it with red stripes and white stars and blue lines. And then I accordioned it and made it round. And I hung them from the ceiling of my mantle. Like I hung them from my ceiling that they, that they just like, um, were on the mantle in in different, in different uh, heights. They looked so fantastic. I remember that too. I mean, so many of your blog posts are like etched in my yeah. memory. <laughs> I know. But I they know. were fun to do. They were super, 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 super easy. And I'll put them in the show notes. And for, I still have them. So I was thinking maybe I would get them out and use them maybe over my swing, but then I'd have to have some way that I could take them down, you know, because I don't want to get them wet, but they were so much fun. And everybody who came to visit just oohed and awed over them. That's a great so idea. Beautiful. Yeah, so, so do many, so many cute. Project. Just so you have to think out of the box, you know, like mm-hmm. think in the color scheme, even if it's just loosely the color scheme and sort of think out of the box, even in your container garden. So if you wanted to do, you know, maybe by the time 4th of July comes around, your container garden that you might have done in May needs a little sprucing anyway. Or if you haven't done one yet this year, you might want to think about doing it in a red, white, and blue theme. So I would suggest, um, again, some geraniums. So you could do the red geraniums in the center. You could add in some lobelia, which is the really, really deep purple. You know, there's not that much true blue in the garden. So lobelia kind of would stand in as your your blue. And then you could use a uh, white periwinkle, which is kind of like impatience, but in shape and, but they can take a little bit more sun because the lobelia and the geranium are going to want some sun. And then I might put in some variegated ivy and let that drip over the edges. Oh, pretty. Oh, yeah. That's really so that's pretty. a really easy mm-hmm. and, you know, it's not like you need to order any of those plants online or anything. They're very common. They'd be in your local nursery or at your Home Depot. Well, I have another thing to talk about as far as red, white, and blue. Think about what kind of a wreath you have on your door. Now, I think uh, do not use a flag as part of your wreath. Actually, I did that once and didn't realize you shouldn't do that. And boy, did people let me know. And actually, I'm glad you really did because uh, I took it down immediately. But uh, think about using some a pretty red, white, and blue on your door. That's a good way to bring a little color um, of the season uh, just 
as a welcome to all the people that that knock on that front door of yours or on your back door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about your bunting. Now, where did you get that? Because oh. uh, I've been I thinking just, about that. Well, it comes in different sizes online and I can I – can, uh, uh, put the link in the show notes. Okay, that would be great. Because I, when, yeah. I, when we first purchased the house, I was sort of picturing it when it's all done and then I'm going to put the bunting around the porch. Oh. And so this might be the year that I end up doing that. Now, I didn't, I'm not going to put it around my railing. I'm going to uh-huh. put it um, at the top of of my porch, like right where the porch meets the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that would be beautiful. Yeah, above too. my front door, but in front, in the you know, in the front of it. So, yeah, so that's where we're going to put it as soon as they're done staining it, staining the porch. Well, you know how Anita always mentions you know, a bowl of fruit, which I think is so great uh, for decor any time of year. Well, this is such a great time of year because there's so many beautiful fruits. Oh, that's true. You know, mm-hmm. including the tomato, which, as we know, is a fruit. Uh, you know, imagine a beautiful heirloom tomatoes in a blue bowl or something like that. I mean, how simple is that? And you get to use it and it just looks so pretty. And, or if you did strawberries or raspberries or, or how about blueberries or blackberries in a red bowl. So darling, inevitably with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Now, it might be a little late for Memorial Day, but it's not too late for the rest of the summer and um, Fourth of July and Labor Day, is that you would plant annuals with those colors in mind. Like, I love to plant salvia because they're long and spiky and even, and they're blue and even their stems are blue. So they're really, really pretty. And I have, um, knockout roses in both red and pink and I bring those in and I love snapdragons. So I plant a lot of white snapdragons and we have white cosmos. So 
we plant annuals and a lot of them are the only blue one I have though, are the salvia. And I would highly recommend just get the annual salvia, not the perennial. And, um, I, I think it's called Victoria, if I'm not mistaken. And you can clip your, oh, and you can do also white zinnias and, um, you can clip all your little annuals all summer long and have something pretty with reds, whites, and blues or some ver- variation of that. Hmm. Well, yeah. I just bought some beautiful red tulips. So I certainly think that it's a great way to add some red, white, and blue uh, to to use fruit. I guess there's no real blue fruit besides blueberries, but to go with the fruit and go with the flowers. And you don't even have to plant things in your yard if you're like me and kind of short on time. Just go to the grocery store or, you know, I grab <laughs> mine at Trader Joe's and mm-hmm. just bring them in and plop them in a, a a picture and they look beautiful. Okay. For the Trader Joe people listening, please come to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. <laughs> I, know, I have to drive an hour out of my way. If I want to come go to my nearest Trader Joe's and I'm, I just love all the flowers I always see there. So you're right, Anita. If I had a Trader Joe's, I'd probably be making that trip an awful lot. Well, I, you know, I mean, the grocery store that's close to me, you know, I buy flowers there too. I mean, they're nice, but it just seems like Trader Joe's has a nicer selection. And, and you can't also, beat their prices. No. And they actually had peonies, which aren't easy to find. Uh, they were I, beautiful. Well, this is off the subject, but I have three peony bushes outside and they are are just so starting jealous. to bloom. We're a little late oh. this year because of all the yeah. rain we had. Yeah. Oh, but I can't. I mean, I I'll I'll bring them in like in armfuls. Oh, mm, because lucky, of, lucky, I said to my know. husband, they don't grow here. I know. Don't you? I said, Bob, don't. Wouldn't that, like a hedge of them look so beautiful? I was pointing oh, out towards the back yes. of our property, and he said, "But Yvonne, they don't la- last that long." I said, "But Bob, they're so worth it for." Yeah, you know, they're like lilacs to me, and there you go. That's another um, something you could substitute. Now, lilacs are just just about done in this area. I have a late blooming lilac tree out front that I can sort of slip in for the red, white, and blue for Memorial Day. I'll bring them in, but they don't last long inside. I've not had really great luck with them, but, uh, you know, just use what you have in your yard or plant, plant for the color that you want. So you can bring that in all summer long and then stick a little flag in it. You know, those little, yeah, stick a flag in it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So fun. Today's been great. I hope you got a lot of tips on uh, doing red, white, and blue right. And we would love for you to pop into the shop today and have a look at how we've done red, white, and blue right. We think we have. And so we hope you enjoy that. And again, don't forget to get on to the um, Decorating Tips and Tricks uh, shop mailing list. You'll want to get all that insider info as we move along here. So we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time.